Hey everybody, it's Chaplain Sal again. I think you know that. Another coffee talk with the Chaplain. Figured I'd do another video on our values. You know, our values pin. I'm gonna do that one right there, stewardship. I did respect yesterday. <clears throat> Figured I'd do stewardship. This is one of those values that I think people struggle with. Um, not that they don't struggle, not that they struggle with doing it, but they sometimes struggle seeing the big picture with stewardship. Stewardship basically is the concept, um, you know, in scripture, in Genesis, in the creation story, Adam is to take care of the Garden of Eden and in Leviticus um, the Israelites are told to um, for six years plant crops to tend the crops to take care of their vineyards but on the seventh year to not tend the crops just let <clears throat> let the earth rest um, kind of like the seven day the seventh day of the week just like we got to give ourselves a Sabbath God tells the Israelites to give the earth a rest, a Sabbath. Um, so we, so we are asked to be stewards of the earth, to take care of the earth. So like recycling and reducing pollution and all that stuff. Um, and then later in the Christian scriptures, in the New Testament. <clears throat> Jesus talks about the parable of the talents, of how uh, a master has three slaves and he gives them each an amount of money and the one with the most money goes out and invests and doubles his money. But the slave with one talent is afraid, so he goes and he hides it and he comes back and I just have the one, um, the one because I was afraid you'd be mad if I lost it. And so Jesus says that servant was not a good steward of his money because he didn't use it wisely. So that's where churches get the idea of stewardship. Most people, when they hear about stewardship, they think of that, that one time of the year when the pastor or the priest or whoever from the pulpit says, you know, we have a budget this year. We need to fill the budget, you know, turn in your pledges or... So we are called to stewardship as a faith-based community because who are we supposed to take care of? <clears throat> our residents, our patients. We are to be good stewards of God's creation while they are living in our facility. Where this becomes tricky is differentiating between stewardship of the person and stewardship of the community. We are, that's part of our name, the communities. We want to ensure we are good stewards of each person. So that's their spiritual health, their physical health, their emotional health, and yes, their financial health. We need to take care of their financial health because they need to be able to afford to live here. But if we focus on one and not any of the others, we're not being good stewards of that person. Um, so in times like these where we're kind of restricting the movement of people, we're restricting them for their physical safety, their physical health safety, and to a degree, some of the other aspects of their lives are getting not abandoned and not neglected, but they're getting not as much attention. Um, because we're trying to be good stewards of their health. Um, and we're trying to protect the community as a whole. Uh, so where that gets kind of tricky is people are like, well, you're not taking care of me because I want to go do X, Y, or Z, and you're limiting my access to X, Y, and Z. Um, we are 
for the safety of others because we're trying at this point to be good stewards of the community. Um, <clears throat> if you're a Star Trek fan, you might remember from the movie The Wrath of Khan, Mr. Spock, who's very rational. Mr. Spock says the, the needs of many outweigh the needs of a few. And Captain Kirk says, or the needs of one. And this sets up a scene where Spock then goes into the radiation, you know, highly radiated room and sacrifices himself for the good of his ship. We need to not lose that as a faith-based community that we are called, yes, to take care of people, individual people. We're called to take care of each other but we're also called to be good stewards of our community. Which means thinking outside of ourselves. Unfortunately, in this country, we have a rugged individualism, this idea that my needs outweigh your needs and the needs of the community. Nothing is more antithetical to our faith as a faith-based community. John Wesley was well known to have said that the Bible knows not a solitary religion. The Bible is all about community, people together. <clears throat> John Calvin always is known to have said that when the heart of any image bearer is hurt, the heart of God is wounded. We need to take care of ourselves, but we need to take care of each other. So while these restrictions may seem like we're not taking care of people, we're taking care of people. The collective people. So stewardship is a hard one because we have to balance the needs of the many with the needs of the one. And I hate to tell you guys, but anytime you ask me, the needs of the many will always outbalance the needs of the one. I will not let one person's individual freedom outweigh the safety and the health of the rest of the community. I think most of the management would agree with that. All right, guys, this has been Coffee Talk about stewardship. We got two more values to do, compassion and service.